Okay, well, thank you very much, Jay, for that spirited introduction. <laughs> I would also like to extend my welcome to all of you uh, joining us for this webinar. Uh, my hope is that we're able to offer you a few insights into your options for managing agricultural workers. As Jay mentioned, I'm an Extension Specialist at the University of Wyoming. Um, I've been here a little over 30 years, Jay. And in the last 20 or so, I have focused most of my work uh, in the many areas of risk management, including some different efforts within the human resource risk uh, category of the five different sources of risk that we face. Uh, I've been con a contributing member of the Right Risk team as well as the Ag Help Wanted team uh, in the past uh, and uh, continue to do work in both of those teams up into the present. Um, and we'll explore a little bit more about that as we go along in this webinar. We have several different learning objectives for the webinar. The first is we hope you gain a basic understanding of the approaches for staffing a farm business. Uh, second, we want to take a, a look at uh, the ins and outs of supervising ag workers. And finally, uh, we're hoping to get you a little better prepared to manage for managing employee performance and especially the various options for pay and benefits. Our Foundations for Better Business Management uh, module combines this webinar and several follow-up online activities that provide our participants with the opportunity for continuing learning and to apply the skills needed for better business management. All the registrants for this webinar are automatically offered the opportunity to participate in those additional components of the module following the webinar. So be sure and check your inbox for an email with directions on how to access uh, those other materials, uh, although it may take us a day or two following the webinar to get the recordings and some of the other materials uh, compiled, so keep that in mind. Uh, as Jay mentioned, I'd like to begin uh, by pointing out that uh, really no matter how long we might spend in, in this particular webinar or other presentations, I'm pretty confident we're not going to be able to address all the different areas of labor management you might have questions about. Uh, fortunately, I'm able to direct you to a resource uh, known as Ag Help Wanted that we compiled uh, several years ago to address this specific topic in a more comprehensive way. Uh, so this book is available in print and online, which I'll say more about at the end of the webinar, but I wanted to point it out as we begin um, that this in presentation is intended to provide you with highlights of the information you might find when you go to that uh, online resource. So what exactly is Ag Help Wanted? Essentially was assembled by a group of six different agricultural economists from several different western states and Canada, and including myself and uh, Mr. Turnells on the, on the webinar this evening. It's organized into six separate chapters, uh, which I will cover the high points of only three of those chapters in this webinar. Uh, but I want you to realize there's a great deal of additional helpful information in the remaining portions of the book we won't be able to, to cover this evening. So chapter three is uh, set up to cover staffing the farm business, uh, all the way from deciding who gets to work in the agricultural business uh, down to orienting new employees. Along the way, it discusses the ideas for hiring a capable uh, workforce, including approaches to selection. It also covers establishing a hiring process and what the steps might be when following such an approach. A few of those steps uh, likely include clarifying the job content, assessing the applicants, and making the communicate and communicating that decision uh, to those who have been involved. So in addition to chapter text, the books contains a number of helpful vignettes and insights from managers across the West and uh, across various different types of agricultural businesses. In this case, we have a story about a manager looking for a tractor driver. I thought it might be helpful I just read that through. It says, last summer, a grower called right after losing his third tractor driver in two months. Can you change my luck, he pleaded. I had to fire the first two before they destroyed my permanent crops entirely, and the third seems to have disappeared. One of my irrigators knew the first guy and said they had worked there together in Colorado a couple years back, but he took out four rows of vines on his second day here, so I had to get rid of him. The next one came around looking for work on that same day. He looked just like a tractor driver, and I figured it was fortunate to find him so easily in the middle of July like that. He certainly talked a good game, but a couple of my orchard workers told me they saw him smoking funny cigarettes and bumping into trees out there. 
And the last straw was when he blew an engine on me by forgetting to keep the fluid levels up. I think he may have been stealing Small's tools from the shop, too. And after that experience, I was determined to fill the job with someone I could trust. I gave it to my best general laborer, a guy who had been with me for eight years. After four days on the job, he never showed up again. And the picture was beginning to come clear. This rancher had hired three tractor drivers, but like many farm and non-farm employers alike, he did not really select them. And so the question here we might ask uh, would be, if we continue to follow the same approach for hiring ag workers, should we really expect a different result? The answer, of course, is probably not. But is there a way to get better results? And we think the answer to that question is yes. So inconsistency between job requirements and individual abilities is a prime foundation for poor performance. It also results in increasing employee turnover. But both production below par and turnover translate into increasing labor costs, quite obviously. Work performance depends on ability and motivation. Neither is sufficient without the other. The most capable person still performs poorly if motivation is low. Likewise, the most eager worker cannot be very productive without ability. So potential employees possess a range of ability levels and hence capacity for high performance. We see here in this figure a small percentage of employees are sure things. Those that are bound to produce fine work, even without careful management after selection. And another small group are the no ways are unlikely to perform very well no matter how high the pay or <laughs> inspiring the supervision. But most people are going to be in the could be category falling between those two extremes and the level of their performance likely depends on the quality of management after, their, after the selection is made. So the further to the right an individual is, is on this graph, the less compensatory or remedial management is needed after selection. Effective selection raises the odds of hiring the more able employees and those who hold up uh, the right side of this distribution. So what are some of the s approaches to selection? I mean, after we receive the applications for an open position, there are numerous w different ways we might go about making that selection. Uh, discriminating among em applicants with respect to job abilities uh, and, and job attributes is both legal and smart management. For example, uh, their understanding of the vine cycle, their mannerism with animals, or their ability to carry a certain amount of weight for most of the day. Federal and state laws, however, prohibit hiring discrimination based on several personal factors such as race, gender, etc. And those that generally are characteristics that have no bearing on their ability to perform the job. So in general, most of us would be looking to move from the walk-ins or those that just kind of feel right to those who seem more suited to the job or who might meet our publicized criteria. Certainly there are circumstances where we might not hire the very best qualified candidate. Probably the most common uh, departures from this would be um, those circumstances that require significant employee development on the job. In those cases, uh, promoting a current employee to a position with greater responsibility may make the very best sense. However, it would be best if this were made clear to all workers up front as uh, promoting uh, those from within can send a clear message to those that are other persons that are in the system. So what are some of the steps in the hiring process? And this is probably not a comprehensive list, but it certainly is a long one. Uh, the idea behind developing a process for hiring is to get to a place where we best match people's skills and interest with the jobs that are available. So you might not want to follow all of the steps that are listed here, or you might not feel that they're necessary, but at least all those steps should probably be considered before we opt for a shorter version of the process. So having the information about the job in a written form lays the foundation for recruitment, selection, and management later on. So a job description certainly should outline the basic details of the job, its purpose, its content, and its attributes. Again, a formal job description can prove valuable later if legal challenges ever come up. To prepare to assess applicants, uh, employers should be very clear about job qualifications and how to get information on whether the applicant meets those qualifications. 
You may want to set up a matrix describing a percentage weighting uh, system across the various duties of a specific position to help with consistently assessing each applicant. For example, if there's a greater concern for how well the applicant fits with the, within the organization uh, or works well with other workers, then you could give more weight to that particular criteria. Information about applicants should be collected in steps when the focus uh, can be given to those who are a better match as the process continues to move forward. And chapter three in the text offers uh, guidance for setting up a process that kind of follows this approach. So here's an example of how to conduct an interview. Uh, each candidate should be offered the same interview experience to avoid uh, possible legal issues and to be fair. Having a ready list of questions that we ask of each candidate allows for a more consistent evaluation of each one. Other portions of the chapter uh, touch on resumes, ministering skill tests, checking references, and legal and illegal discrimination. So the time and effort invested in one position versus another should be commensurate with the importance of that position. A rancher farm manager position is likely much more important than this week's haying crew, for example. Making the decision may require consideration of other details, too, such as how well would the person fit in with coworkers, or would they reflect well on the operation, or might they bring more to the job than we're looking for. So when we offer the job, it can be done verbally. However, better documentation of the offer and acceptance would be done in writing. The offer can spell out the details of the job, such as the place of employment, the wage rate, the work activities, period of employment, et cetera, et cetera. But the offer can also spell out what the uh, formal acceptance should look like, such as a reply with a signed letter, for example. It can also be a good idea to notify those that are not or were not selected. Uh, they may be interested in other positions you know about or that you have open, uh, and your top candidate may not actually agree to your terms. So keeping uh, the lines of communication open with the other applicants might be a good, good insurance policy. And although you may be lucky enough to fill your position with the top candidate, it doesn't necessarily guarantee success on the job. The first day or two on the job likely set the pace for the future employee relationships with that particular person. So attention to detail here can, just, can be just as important as all the steps prior to hiring. So helping the new employee learn the ropes, learn what is expected, where to go for instructions, where to go for assistance, et cetera, is a big step in the right for direction for everyone involved and uh, can't overemphasize the need for orienting employees as to what, you're, what you have in mind for that position and how to get help should they need it. Now, moving on to Chapter 4 is, covers the entire uh, cross-section of, of the elements within the idea of supervising that agricultural worker once you have them on the place. Uh, so it covers various approaches and considerations for supervising workers. Uh, specific sections uh, range from deciding which employees will supervise, how work is going to be assigned, uh, supervisory decision-making, as well as uh, supporting teamwork and how to foster that a little more effectively. This diagram, uh, taken from the book, describes the situation commonly found in most operations uh, with more than just a couple of workers. In this case, the supervisors are the people in the middle, and as such, they are a critical link between management and employees. They are the individuals charged with getting things done through others, and not everyone is cut out for this sort of work. Delegation is another completely separate element here and to take into consideration. Uh, this takes place uh, at at least two different levels. Management delegates to supervisors, and then those supervisors in turn delegate to operational workers. Now, clearly, delegation is likely necessary within any kind of an operation because the volume and range of work to be accomplished uh, is so great. Rarely can one person get it all done on their own. But rather than whether or not to delegate, the question is probably usually more of what to delegate to whom, when, and to what extent. The chapter covers the challenges managers uh, face when making these decisions and suggests they carefully uh, consider those different options 
and it offers the guidance on the approaches and techniques that may work for your situation. Certainly there are different styles uh, for decision making, especially within the supervisory realm. So beyond delegation, managers should also carefully consider the level of participation employees will have within the decision making structure. Uh, in some cases, they will have a very minimal role and in others, uh, greater participation. Again, the chapter offers several things to think about uh, when making this decision and, and the approaches that you might be going to use or suggest that supervisors use. Another section of the chapter uh, looks at leadership and influencing workers to do their best versus using various types of power to get the work done. Obviously, different situations call for different approaches. And in addition, what works for one individual may not be the best approach for another. So uh, this portion of the chapter may give you some different ideas for, again, motivating folks uh, to get the kind of work done that, that you desire. Uh, also, managing supervisors is a different challenge than managing workers. Obviously, how well supervisors are doing at their jobs can lead to better outcomes. And conceptually, what we're talking about here is that better management should lead to better supervision, in which case we should get better work out of our workers. So uh, this section of the chapter offers some ideas and, and thoughts about how to manage the supervisors within your organization. And then um, su supporting and, and managing teamwork, there's certain types of ag operations rely more on, on teamwork than others, uh, clearly, but, uh, but it's a critical part of, of various different kinds of, of uh, harvesting operations uh, across a great section of the, of the West, at least. And so this chapter offers some, some ideas to how to better support teams and how to develop a sense of teamwork amongst your workers. So that may be helpful. The fifth chapter within Ag Help Wanted covers the various aspects of managing employee performance. Uh, obviously, important considerations here are the usual pay and benefit levels. Uh, but also includes assessing performance, uh, motivation, as well as employee ability and uh, their motivation to do the work. So touching first on managing employee performance, uh, performance management covers all that different communication between the manager and the employee. It must include what to do, how to do it, how well it was done, as well as how to improve the next time around. So most people want to do a good job, I think we'd all agree, uh, but poor performance can usually be traced back to negative past experience or con current conditions of inequity, fatigue, failure, or maybe mixed messages. So how to motivate those employees uh, really does become kind of an important factor. We start off by thinking here about workers often cite insufficient direction uh, to explain their failure to perform. They want to know what is expected how they're doing, how to monitor their own performance, and how others see them. If a worker is unable to perform the duties assigned, uh, in that case, the manager may want to reconsider the assignment, if that's possible. Uh, when employees know what to do, can do the work, but do not perform, this is going to be one of those classic cases of lack of motivation. Some people refer to as an attitude problem. Uh, and so if we're thinking about uh, addressing those different challenges, we start maybe with the ability section. Here we're really looking at the needs for additional training or uh, on-the-job preparation where they can, the employees can gain the additional skills they need uh, to do an excellent job or to do even better at the job uh, that they currently have been assigned. Uh, so the text provides several different suggestions. Consider uh, where there is a need to provide training, how to organize that training, different kinds of learners, et cetera. So you may want to uh, look at that if training is an important feature uh, or challenge that you're facing. Motivation in work. For most managers, motivated work looks a lot like accepting the job offer, staying in the job, producing high quality results, and coming to work reliably. Uh, the book offers several different ideas for enhancing motivation beyond the typical carrot and stick alternatives that I think we're probably all really familiar with. 
Some of those alternatives can come from the employee perspective of what charges up their energy battery reserves versus what drains it down. And you should keep in mind that removing one or more draining factors does not necessarily equal a charge. And so just thinking through what you know the employee experience is on the job and thinking through how we might enhance that experience so that they are, in fact, more motivated. And finally, we come to pay and performance. Uh, just because money is a valued incentive to work does not necessarily mean that it always stimulates the action that managers want. Uh, there are certainly many different ways to structure the rewards based on performance. The question is whether or not the structure selected motivates the worker to achieve the desired results whether or not the structure allows the workers the chance to move up within a given position can make a big difference to that worker also how the current position that they're in uh, and the pay that's uh, it's structured for that position compares with other jobs that are on the place uh, changes or may adjust in how the worker views their current job and their future within your organization so how you structure those different pay scales is what this is intended to to, to uh, suggest you might think about and how those relate again across different kinds of jobs on your operation. Benefits, uh, certainly something that most people think about offering. Uh, fringe benefits are certainly those non-wage compensation that we might offer for employee services. These usually include things like food or housing, uh, maybe pension plans, sick leave, uh, vacation time, etc. Some of those ben benefits may be viewed as traditional uh, and that you know pretty much all the operators in this area or region of the state offer. Others, uh, such as health insurance or uh, special kinds of compensation might be viewed as more optional. Uh, comprehensive benefits package can amount to 20, 40, or even more uh, percent of the total labor cost. Uh, so it certainly can be very expensive but you should also keep in mind that not offering certain kinds of benefits uh, or no benefits at all, in addition to your wages, may be the reason that employees look for another job at some other employer. Most workers are interested to improve their own work and their position. An approach that provides accurate feedback to employees can help pinpoint areas uh, for added effort or future development. In most cases, the decision is not whether to have a performance appraisal, but rather what form it will take. Although you may not have or conduct a formal annual review for each of your employees, be assured that the daily interaction you have conveys your opinion of their work. It comes across subtly often, uh, but they have an understanding. Uh, our position here is that a structured appraisal offers the chance to provide meaningful feedback at worst, and at best, it may result in more effort being made at the things that matter most to you. So the text offers insights and suggestions for establishing an employee appraisal process. Who should do it, when it should be done, what, it sh what should be measured, and several other dimensions of, of that appraisal performance process and, and uh, what it should entail. So certainly ag labor and its associated risks are just one of the five sources of risk of concern to most ag managers. Clearly, the people side of the business is important to manage well for overall success going forward. Ag Help Wanted is one resource uh, you may find helpful in managing ag workers. It includes other materials beyond what we've covered in this presentation. Perhaps most significantly is an entire chapter on communication and problem solving. Uh, the companion website includes links to other resources and examples, as well as uh, public agencies and services. And so we'd recommend that for additional information beyond even what's included in the text itself. The website also includes book excerpts online, so they're free of charge, but they're short excerpts out of the, out of the text itself. And it offers a place to order a printed copy if you're interested, or an electronic version of the book that we uh, make available on CD. So you can check that out at aghelpwanted.org. 
And with that, Jay, I hope I've given folks a few things to think about regarding staffing, supervising, and managing ag workers. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to share those insights uh, out of the Ag Help Wanted text. I hope you find them helpful. With that, I guess I'd be happy to try and answer any questions that you might have. <laughs>